If you're wondering why I'm looking over in this direction, it is because my iPad's over here. Usually my iPad would be what I'm recording with, but I actually just got a camera. Yay! So because of that, you might notice some better quality, but <laughs> the contrast is that usually I use my iPad um, specifically for a teleprompter app so that I can just read off the screen. I know I'm very sophisticated. But I can't do that right now because I'm using the tripod for my camera. So I haven't quite figured out how to figure that yet. So until then, I'm just going to be reading off this um, instead because, to be honest, my memory is not that great. And there's usually a lot of stats when it comes to these climate recaps. And I just want to make sure that I get everything right. Hey y'all, it's Becky here from The Beckett Sphere, where we talk about climate news and solutions. You've entered the weekly climate recap, where we talk about what is being done to mitigate and adapt to climate change. And this week, we are going to talk about what happened from August 12th to 17th. Guys, let's go ahead and get right into this week's news. According to the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, also known as NOAA, July was the hottest month in recorded human history. And honestly, if we were to look from or talk to anyone from like British Columbia to Italy to Chile, I'm pretty sure everybody would agree that that last month was a doozy. So <laughs> crazy though, the hottest month in human recorded history. Bill Gates announced that his climate investment fund, Breakaway Energy, will commit $1.5 billion over the next three years to projects being covered in the U.S. Infrastructure Bill, which still needs to get passed by the House. He plans on coordinating this effort with the Department of Energy. The world's largest steelmaker, China Baowu Steel Group, is testing a low-carbon metallurgy technology of hydrogen and recycled gas. Over just 10 days, they already saw a 10% drop in carbon emissions, and they are hoping to get up to a 30% drop. So that potentially could be a very big breakthrough, as steel is one of the most carbon-intense industry bits, but also is one of the hardest to decarbonize, so that could be a big thing. The California Energy Commission unanimously approved a proposal that would require builders to include solar panels and battery storage in new commercial structures, including high-rise residential product projects. The plan also mandates wiring to be set up in those buildings to accommodate electro electric appliances rather than natural gas appliances. Needless to say, SoCal Gas probably not going to be a very big fan of that. They have been in very, very busy lobbying against efforts to move away from natural gas. Uh, there's two articles, actually one's a podcast episode and the other's an article linked in the source section of the description below if you want to learn more about that, but allegedly a little sketchy. But the plan still needs to be approved by the state's Building Standards Commission and if passed, it will come into effect in 2023 beginning of it. Over 90 people have died in wildfires in Algeria. 33 of those who died were soldiers fighting the flames and there's still 19 flames still active. What's interesting is apparently uh, last year 440,000 acres burned in Algeria which really cements to me how little I hear about Africa when it comes to extreme weather events or just the climate conversation in general. It definitely was not on my climate recap for 2020 because I didn't know about it. News of the IPCC report dropping actually seemed to get less attention than the 2018 drop according to a report by Newswhip. One possible reason why, honestly, is just because we're bombarded by depressing information from the pandemic and because the news headlines for the IPCC report were so scary sounding, rightfully so to some extent, um, that they that people probably just didn't want to engage with it. But that's a problem for us because we need people to engage. A new analysis by the ICF Climate Center found that green hydrogen might soon drop in price and become the top hydrogen option. Right now, uh, blue hydrogen is the top option and blue hydrogen is made as a byproduct from natural gas, whereas green hydrogen is made from um, processes involving clean energy. So 
green would be better, the co-author of the study explained why it's significant like this. Quote, green hydrogen is really energy storage and dispatchable electricity. So basically when your solar panel's not generating, when turbines not turning, you're going to turn to hydrogen to produce that energy. Kind of like how right now we are turning to fossil fuels or nuclear or hydropower. This is on the heels of another study that found that the process that makes blue hydrogen emits more carbon than we initially thought. And honestly, are we surprised because I feel like we're learning um, about worse effects of natural gas than like every, in every single day. Like there was the whole natural gas leak in the Gulf of Mexico, which was completely terrifying. And we are learning more about the um, effects of fracking in local areas. So any other fuel source that's therefore connected to those processes not going to be that great for the environment. But there is also some positive news coming with the green hydrogen. And this is probably one of the reasons why people are expecting a price drop. In May, Oman announced that it would be building the world's largest green hydrogen plant to run on solar power. And earlier, Japan said that they would be building the largest green hydrogen plant. And now last week, Panasonic announced that it was turning a fuel cell factory into a green hydrogen plant in Japan. So there's some cool projects going on. If you want to learn more about hydrogen power in general, you can click up here to see a video that I did after this video. Just, just you know, make it another tab. So first Turkey was on fire and now it is being flooded. <laughs> Um, over 77 people have died in extreme flooding and mudslides, and 47 are still missing. Estimated insured losses ha have now reached $42 billion for the first half of the year, surpassing the average of $33 billion for this time period in the way of natural disasters, according to the insurance company Swiss Re. This makes 2021 the second most expensive year for disasters after 2011, which was scary bad. The U.S. declared a water shortage on the Colorado River for the first time ever. 40 million people in the U.S. and Mexico rely on the Colorado River as their main drinking water supply. And Lake Mead, which was formed to supply water to Las Vegas via the Hoover Dam being built, is seeing the lowest levels it has seen since 1930s when the dam was built. Due to this declaration, the U.S. government has agreed with Mexico and Native American tribes living by the river to put a tier one water restriction on it. This has kind of been anticipated for a long time and talks on what different tiers mean had already been discussed in 2019. Farmers who are also anticipating this to happen have switched over to less water intensive crops for the most part, though some farmers are trying to mitigate the drop in their a lot of water by using the local groundwater. And that can lead to some concerns about how sustainable that will be for how long. Tropical depression Grace flooded the already decimated country Haiti which just experienced a 7.2 magnitude earthquake, killing an estimated 1,300 people. Now it's headed for Mexico. And meanwhile, Tropical Depression Fred uh, moved up through Florida and completely flooded it, and now is spinning off tornadoes and threatening to flood the rest of the East Coast. The new artificial intelligence tool, Greenwatch, parses media statements, websites, and other corporate communications for sustainability claims about 700 global companies and then compares it to the company's actual carbon footprint to show investors how serious these companies are about keeping their promises. The overseer of the analysis had this to say, quote, Companies are spinning one story after another. If no one checks them, they will say what they want. And since sustainability is such a broad term, it's easy for companies to create a story that detracts from the real issues. The group's early findings show that 95% of communications companies that they looked at are greenwashing themselves, as well as 80% of industry and consumer companies. However, less than half of energy companies say seem to appear to be greenwashing themselves. And geographically, Japanese companies have had the highest percentage of greenwashed statements, with the U.S. companies being in second place. 
Now, as a reminder, greenwashing is basically where a company spends more money on advertising that they are sustainable than they do on actually doing the part to be more sustainable. You can learn more about their processes and everything by checking out greenwatch.ai. Northern Europe is starting to show their disinterest in uh, cutting emissions. Last week, Switzerland rejected calls for banning fossil fuels by 2050, somehow thinking that they can um, hit zero emissions while still allowing police, the army, and rescue services to use fossil fuels after 2050. I mean, I guess they're kind of just making it available for the emergency cases. So what do you think about that? Do you think that that's reasonable? Meanwhile, Norway is considering continuing oil exp exploration. According to a recent poll, 55% of Norwegians want to continue exploring. Norway is the richest country in Scandinavia, basically due to its oil wealth. However, there are some positive signs that this exploration will become unprofitable sooner than we expected thanks to higher prices suggesting death throes of volatility in the oil industry. So we will see. After deadly flooding last month, a national campaign has been launched in China to shut down 40,000 dams, which sounds like it would literally be the death of hydropower in China, but most dams are too small to deliver much power and in some cases they are too drought stricken to be able to do that. And this honestly, um, comes not surprising after a huge frenzy of dam buildings that took place in the early 2000s and so honestly 40,000 isn't too much um, and several didn't even get environmental assessments done before they were built. So basically nature had had enough and already started knocking some down. And finally, a new report published in the environmental research letters found that news media coverage of climate change in the US Australia, the UK, Canada, and New Zealand has hit an accuracy rate of 90% in the last 15 years. Climate change is no longer portrayed as a controversial issue. Finally, quote, two decades ago, print media frequently gave equal credence to both legitimate climate experts and outlier climate deniers. But we found in more recent years that the media around the globe actually got it right most of the time. The study showed that the only area that still has a lot of bias about the whole issue is in conservative media. The study specifically calls out Canada's National Post, Australia's Daily Telegraph and Sunday Telegraph, and the UK's Daily Mail and Mail on Sunday for being extremely biased towards the issue in a uh, in an unproductive direction. <sighs> I'm guessing they didn't cover Fox News because maybe Fox News is considered more TV news and they were looking more web production. I don't really know, but Fox News was not in there, but I'm sure it would have been on the list if it was there. I highly recommend checking out the full report, which will be linked in the source section of the description below. And that was the climate recap from August 12th to 17th. Please let me know if there's anything I missed in the comments below. And let me know if you like this style, I guess. <laughs> um, if you appreciate the work I do, uh, please consider hitting the subscribe button and checking out my Patreon. So yeah, it's basically the equivalent of, you know, a cup of coffee a month. I mean, the, the highest tier is more like Starbucks coffee, but you know. <laughs> Until next time, remember to talk about the climate every single day and to support your local news organizations. I will see you all next time. Bye!